Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee and Ink, and in this video we're going to show you three different tactics for curing water-based ink. So in a small studio, you might not have a forced air conveyor dryer, which they have in the big factories, and that's the recommended way to cure water-based inks. So in this video, I'm going to show you the results of curing with a heat press, a conveyor dryer, and this, which is an additive, and it's called a cold cure catalyst, which is something that you'd add to the water-based ink and leave. And we're also going to show you the results of not putting any or like doing any curing whatsoever. Do our wash tests and then I'll show you all the different results to see if you can bring any of these into your studio for curing water-based inks. What we're trying to achieve when we're saying curing water-based inks is basically getting the water out of the ink. So that's like the solve the water in water-based inks is called it solvent. So first we'll get the water out, all the moisture, and then what we're trying to do is get the pigment and the binder to actually bind onto the fabric. That means that once we've done that reaction, then it's not gonna wash out through wash cycles and eventually fade out into hardly anything, basically a stain. So that's the kind of tactic. We're gonna get the moisture out and then we're gonna make the binder adhere to the fibers. This is the t-shirt that we're going to be printing in today's video and uh, we actually fund our YouTube video through the sale of our Blind Maggot merchandise and you can get hold of some of our merch on blindmaggot.co.uk and all of our squeegee viewers get a massive £10 off at the checkout when you add squeegee in the discount code section. The first method for curing water-based inks that we're going to demonstrate is using cold cure additive. This is effectively a catalyst and it helps the binder bind onto the fabric without the use of heat. So this is going to be really handy for loads of studios without a flash or a conveyor dryer. So it's very simple to use. You simply add it at a ratio of 10% to your water-based ink. And in this video, we're gonna use the Amex ink in conjunction with this because it's made by Amex as well. And we just think that keeping all the chemistry together and using what it's been designed to be used with is gonna be a really good tactic for the studio. The big positives for using a cold cure additive in your inks is that a little bit of reassurance that your inks are gonna cure properly. Um, you might even use it in conjunction with some kind of like heating. To cure as well but it's mainly the fact that you don't need to invest in a flash dryer and a conveyor dryer and technically you could do it in a small home setup. There are some drawbacks though so it takes 48 hours for this to cure your water-based inks onto your garments so that's actually quite cumbersome because if you're not drying them that means that you're not able to stack the wet ink on top of each other so you might have it where you've got loads of t-shirts all over your studio which might be an annoying. So I don't know, some people might print on a Friday, come back on a Monday and they know that all their shirts are cured over the weekend. However, you might need to think of a way of stacking your shirts, like maybe on a little rack like this where they're not quite touching, but you might be able to get some airflow or even putting them on a washing line around your studio. So it's not very practical for commercial screen printing, but it could be a really good tactic for specialist materials that you don't want to heat up or just as you're starting out and you haven't got the money for the expensive kit yet. We're gonna print a couple of shirts with the cold cure additive in and the rest with just normal Amex ink. And then we're gonna do a comparison and show you the wash test results against the other shirts at the end. So you can skip ahead to see the results if cold cure is all you're interested in. The second method, which is really popular, of curing water-based ink is with a heat press. And people use heat presses because they often just have them in the studio as um, a lot of screen printers also do vinyl and transfer application. So it's, it is a method that you can use, but you've got to think about it in terms of you still need the shirt to be touch dry so that you're not stamping wet ink everywhere. Also you're still going to have to leave the shirts around the studio as they dry, hopefully leaving them overnight to get rid of some of that excess water out of the ink. And um, I think the main 
drawback to using a heat press is just the time where you can't really be doing anything else. So they have to be under there at 165 degrees for people vary it from around 45 seconds to over a minute. So you're basically just stood there waiting for that shirt to cure. Whereas on a conveyor drive, for example, you're hardly even thinking about the curing because you're printing, putting it in the cure, and then you can get back to printing it again. So there isn't as much lag time and it's not as insanely boring as curing water-based shirts on a heat press. Another drawback is for this particular design, we've actually extended the back piece onto the sleeves. So that's actually four print locations that we need to be able to cure underneath the press. Um, again, it's just magnifying the amount of time and like manual labor investing in actually curing the ink on the shirts. So it, it can be an effective way, but the, the thing that we're trying to do is to evaporate water and there isn't actually airflow on a heat press. It's just kind of staying there like a little sandwich and it's like actually maybe even keeping the moisture in. So you do need to allow the most of the water to get out of the fabric and then use this just for the curing. So this is just being used to apply heat to allow the binder and the pigments to like bond onto the fibers. The biggest advantage to getting a heat press is that it's really adaptable piece of kit for any studio and it's much cheaper than getting a conveyor dryer and doesn't use much space. The problem is that you might be tempted to get one of the really, really cheap heat presses off like one of those um, like Amazon or eBay or something like that and it is a false economy. Uh, they don't have the same like heating element that goes all the way through the the top heating element and you can get cold spots and actually not cure parts of your design and that is much more costly than investing in a really good piece of kit. So we got this one from Target Transfers and you're welcome to use our discount code with anything on the Target Transfers site which is squeegee at checkout to get a discount and uh, yeah we massively encourage people to get a decent press that's actually going to be useful in the studio for loads of different jobs. The third method is using the conveyor dryer, which we're really used to using as we mainly print with plaster inks. And what this is, is an infrared dryer with a conveyor belt running underneath. So this is effectively like the oven portion of the dryer. So um, in the big studios, they have forced air, which helps all the water evaporate out of the ink. So we've kind of like simulated this by having our like extractor fan on the top there. So that's actually encouraging airflow through the dryer. Also some other things that you can do to help the airflow and all the moisture get out of your conveyor dryer would be to raise the gates a little bit again to stimulate the airflow through the dryer and let it circulate so you're not just circulating hot moist air back into the shirts. And you need to think about the belt speed so you want to run it through as slowly as possible because some of these inks say on the packet that they need up to three minutes to cure which is a lot longer than what you normally think with plaster ink. Um, so we definitely think that the big buddy is worth the money because we used to have a little one and we'd have to run it through multiple times and also it getting like hot and cold and hot and cold and you didn't know which shirt had been through once, which shirt had been through twice, and it becomes a little bit of a nightmare. Whereas now we just run this at the slowest speed, a nice high temperature, but making sure that we're not scorching the shirts because they're under there for quite a long time. We've got loads of airflow and we can put them through once. The final point I wanna make about the Big Buddy is that we can use it in our studio, which gets supplied with single phase electricity and that's counter to what the big commercial units are supplied with because they're often supplied with three phase electric, which means they've got access to a lot of larger range of dryers. So we were able to use this one and plug it straight in. So we think the Big Buddy has been one of the best investments for our studio. And again, you can use our personal discount code on the Screen Print World website, which is CRP5. We've just done a wash test of 30 degrees in a washing machine and we've got some really interesting results to show you. So we have the three methods of curing and we've got one that hasn't had any curing at all. 
So I want to discuss each one individually. So this one is the tunnel dryer and it's a really rich black. I can't see any loss of the vibrant color against the shirt and um, it looks even the whole way across. I'd be really happy with that one. Thank goodness, because that's the method that we use for most of our printing. And then we've got cold cure additive. Now, this one's really interesting. It's not quite as rich a black as the tunnel dryer one, but thinking about it, when I actually put the cold cure in, it did slightly take off the, the rich blackness of the ink. However, I do think it's stained on there really well, and um, I'd be happy to send that out, I think. I, if it was me personally, I might, and I didn't have like all the normal drying equipment, I might still take them and put them in a tumble dryer, just to kind of bolster the like heat setting capabilities of the ink. So cold cure is perfectly acceptable on its own, but you might want to just maybe iron it or just add some kind of heat just to reassure yourself fully and try and get up to the tunnel dryer standard. And um, this one is the no cure. And I thought that was really dramatic actually. I didn't think it would be that abysmal, but it really has lost all its vibrancy. You can see all the fibers haven't taken the ink and uh, it's pretty awful. The results with the heat pressed shirt are the most interesting. So I would say that the vibrancy of the black is very similar to the tunnel dryer. It is a little bit of loss with the fibers being dyed. But what's really interesting is actually the sleeves of this one. So the sleeves are almost the same results as a no cure. And um, thinking about it and looking at what I did, I changed platen from the back to the sleeves when I was heat pressing and I actually didn't make enough contact with the heating element and the shirt so it was almost like hovering over the surface of it and it wasn't like really curing the ink and applying the heat enough to stain it so making contact with the heat press and the garment is crucial with water-based ink curing Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it useful and helped you cure your water-based ink. Um, don't forget, we sell the Blind Maggot shirts to fund the YouTube channel, and we promise to send you a cured one. And um, yeah, please like, follow, and subscribe to the channel to get notified of our next video. And don't forget to use Squeegee on the blindmaggot.co.uk website to get money off your shirt. Tech Sprint. Catalyzatore extra, but that is basically a cold cure additive.